Hello, I'm Tim Krull. Welcome to Norwich City Central. What's going on everyone? Norwich City Central. This is another social media reaction video uh, to Norwich City's championship life. Um, it ended Bristol City 2, Norwich City 2. Uh, Bristol City, um, uh, they could have easily have won this game, but Norwich City fought back and showed great resilience to get a 2-2 draw. Don't think Bristol City were great, but Norwich certainly weren't either. We were sloppy, we were lethargic on the ball. Uh, we did take the lead for a brilliant Marco Schiff from goal from 25 yards out. Beautiful cloud, but we conceded on the stroke of half-time. Poor goal to give away, and then even a poorer goal to give away at 2-1. And Bristol City looked like they were going to go on to win the game. They had a good spell between the 50th and 70th minute. But Norris City showed character, and Max Aarons, one of our own, managed to salvage a point. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest performance for Norwich, but at least we got a point. Uh, the unbeaten run continues, and hopefully we can still kick on. Uh, but yeah, this is how social media have reacted. I've already uploaded my match review, so please feel free to go watch that. And yeah, this is the social media reaction to Norwich City's 2-2 draw against Bristol City. And we start with Matt Johnson, who says, Next game, Hernandez and Leitner to start in place of Campwell and Rancic for me, based on today. Credit those who came on, gave us that much-needed spark. Fort Rose did well too. Yeah, we are 2-1 down, and we, as I was saying, we look really lethargic and slow on the ball. Emmy Buendia and Todd Cantwell certainly had one of their poorest games in months. I thought Todd Cantwell was just... Nothing really worked for him today, and Emmy Wendia lost the ball almost every opportunity. Both were really poor games. Um, but look, Hernandez and Rhodes came on and, and, and were effective, and in particular, Rodo Hernandez. He came on, his pace to beat his man, and then put a brilliant ball at the back stick, changed the game. And credit to Farker for the substitutions as well, and credit for those who came on. You know, Hanley came on as well, and he was so, so good coming on for that 30 minute spell, uh, made some great tackles. and... Yeah, Hernandez are likely to start for me, I think, as well, based on the performance. Um, although Hernandez is a brilliant, brilliant super sub to get, uh, put on. Ben Seeger says, if you can't win, just don't lose. Norris not at their best today, but beach and run continues. Take the point and move on. Yep, Norris City weren't at the best. And although that is a concern, I mean, it's great that we still are, are unbeaten. Uh, you know, as long as you win your home games and, you know, when you win your away games and get a few draws here and there as well, it's always positive. And Bristol City is not an easy place to come. You know, Ashton Gate... Um, it can be a difficult place to go. Bristol City were in good form coming into this game. Seven points from a three. Uh, they beat Birmingham, and Birmingham hadn't lost a, a game at uh, St Andrews. So Bristol City were in a good, good run of form. And I, I thought, I thought, I, I just, I do think we we're sloppy, but at least we got the point, and we can move on now. Uh, Adam Lambert says I've taken the point before the game, even more so considering we weren't at the races for a lot of that game. Full credit to Daniel Farge, his, tact his tactical tweets salvaged that point. Yeah, as as as, as the uh, the comment below said, uh, the subs were brilliant, weren't they? Uh, although although Jordan Rose didn't get didn't get a goal, you know he, he got an offside goal, and just his just his presence gave the Bristol City defenders start start something to think about. Bristol City were on top, and as soon as those subs came on, Bristol City came back ten yards, and Norwich City uh, were the ones who had dominated the game and. Yeah, fair play to Daniel Farker and his tweaks. I loved the press conference uh, earlier on in the week where he said uh, uh, how, how, how the fans see Jordan Rhodes as one of us. I feel one of us and my heart is yellow. Just a brilliant quote, isn't it, from Daniel Farker. My heart is yellow. And yeah, his tactical tweets salvaged the point and that's pleasing. But hopefully now, you know, if we can beat Blackburn away, and oh, don't get me wrong, Blackburn away is a tough place to go. But if we can go there and win, that four points from those two away games is absolutely outstanding. So... Yeah, it's just about looking at the next game, improving and um, not being as sloppy on the ball. Uh, Liam says, I've taken a draw at half-time, but good comeback. Yeah, good comeback. Uh, we're used to Norris City comes back, aren't we? Great resilience, great character. and We, we were close to getting that third goal as well. Jordan Rhodes, um, obviously the offside goal, and then Grant Hanley with a brilliant runway. He had a brilliant, powerful strike. Uh, which was saved by the keeper. So, yeah, we could have even got that third goal. But all things considering, especially how, how poor we were at stages in that second half, a draw was a decent result. Uh, Anita says, well fought point, slowly pulling away away from the top two. I'm happy with the tough Christmas period uh, ahead. Get a great subs by Daniel Farker. Let's stick with the boys. Yep, let's stick with the boys, obviously. There's great togetherness. Uh, as I said, the way point at Bristol City is a decent result. And it was a well fought point as well. I mean, the first half, Bristol City were causing a lot of problems with corners. I thought Christoph Zinnemann and Ben Godfrey uh, dealt with some dealt with some corners really well, and in particular Ben Godfrey, I thought it was another very impressive performance by the youngster. Um, and then Bristol City got their two goals, and Norwich City just completely fed off the fed off the boil. You know our passes were all over the place. Rancic wasn't keeping control of the ball. Teddy, that was his worst performance probably of the season. Just so so wasteful and could have got sent off. So yeah, we did show great character to fight back, and it is a tough Christmas period ahead. You know Blackburn away. 
Derby and Forest at home. Derby and Forest are both in the round the top six. And, you know, if, if they come to Carrow Road and win, Norris City are right back into that top six back. And we're looking over our shoulders at seventh place all, at seventh place all of a sudden. But, no, Norris City are, sh are showing great character. But, yeah, we, we, need, we need to improve and not be so sloppy. But, yeah, if, if you take context, let take context. If you said at the start of the season, at the halfway stage of the season, Norris City would be, uh, what, five points clear of third? you bite your hand off. And even if Derby win against um, who they got, Nottingham Forest, Norwich City will still be four points clear of third. So there's a lot of positives to take. Uh, Rob says there's only one Daniel Farkas in the Norwich City fans. It's great to see now that Norwich City fans have great affiliation with the manager. Uh, there is a real togetherness between the fans and players. And, you know, Daniel Farkas is now regularly coming over to see the fans, which is really nice to see, you know, as, as a fan. And you've gone on a long away day. You, you just want your, you, you want your players and your managers to come over and just show that appreciation, and they certainly did that. Uh, Gina says, got to be proud of the never-say-die attitude. Five points clear of third. Ten games are beaten. On to next week. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. Um, yeah, I'm still proud of the never-say-die attitude. You know, it, as I said, at 2-1, we were in a really difficult patch. Uh, slow on the ball, and yeah, good, great, great finish by Max Aarons as well, wasn't it, to ghost in at the far post. Five points clear of third. Happy days, isn't it? Um, Nigel says very good away point, uh, very good uh, point away from home. Considering Tetty had one of his off days and Crawl, I really don't know what to think. Uh, let's move on to Tim Crawl. It's a difficult one because Tim Crawl made two outstanding saves. He's a brilliant shot stopper. The second save in particular to tip it over for that thirty yards shot was spectacular. But for the first goal, you know, a, a, a great goalkeeper probably saves that. But Tim Crawl's not at the fault for it. Tetty and Jamal Lewis probably were. But there was a moment in the uh, second half where it's a simple, simple shot to save. He collects it and then he just almost par he parries it. And if Diageo was a few yards closer, he'd have tapped it in. It's 3-1 and it's probably game over. So it's a tough one with Tim Crow. I've always stood up for him and thought, you know, he's going to become a better goalkeeper as he plays more and more. And I still hold that opinion, but he's got to improve that parrying. And there's only so much... You know, so much you could back a player before you've got to start criticising the way he's handling a ball. But, you know, you've still got to back Tim Krull throughout the whole season. And I do believe he will come good and become, you know, one of the better goalkeepers in this league. Teddy had one of his off days, bloody hell. And, uh, Teddy's been so reliable, so disciplined this season. But I don't know what happened to Alex Teddy today. Very poor from him. Uh, Mark, Mark, uh, Mike says, one thing for sure, Hanley needs to stay in the team. He showed real leadership and steady the ship. Hard earned point, which would take, yep. Yeah, but it was all over the place at the back at times. Um, and that, that, that doesn't just come from the, the centre backs and the full backs. It comes from the midfield. Ranchich and Tetty were sloppy in that, and usually, usually Tetty's a great shield for the defence. And his sloppiness led to our defence being poorer, poorer. But Hanley came in, great tackles, crunching tackles, real leader. And it's you know Hanley and Tim Closer is a good partnership. And I, th I think you've got to give that partnership one more go, in my opinion. And finally, one more comment we'll say: a more direct approach in the last twenty minutes was the reason we got a point from Darren. Yeah. Uh, Bristol City's uh, corners and, and crosses were uh, causing a lot of problems in the first half, and I thought we kind of fought fire on fire. Ono Hernandez um, came on and changed the game with a brilliant cross, and yeah, the, the few crosses, you know, w w when you bring on someone like Jordan Rhodes and Timo Pukki, you've got two great target men, and although we like to play this brilliant passing football, sometimes you've got to utilise having two target men, and I thought we did that, and please, we got the point. That's how social media reacted. I'm just going to quickly do a player ratings. I just rate a few of the players' performances. Tim Krull, 6 out of 10, as I said. Two brilliant saves, but did look a little bit sloppy at times as well. Jamal Lewis, 6 out of 10. Not his best performance today, but you know a cracking left-back on his day. Ben Godfrey, 7 out of 10. Very impressed with him. Uh, he won some crucial headers as well. And it is going to be tough to drop him, but if you have Tim Close and Grant Hanley back fit in your side, you've probably got to go with those options. And you've still got uh, academy graduates on the pitch. Uh, Zinnerman 6 out of 10 decent performance by him 2 deflections he'll, he'll be gutted about that and hopefully his hamstring injury is not too serious Max Aarons 8 out of 10 fantastic isn't he just absolutely fantastic um, really brilliant from him Mario Ranchett 6 out of 10 not his best performance today sloppy on the ball Tetty 5 out of 10 even worse from him I've been so so impressed with Alex Tetty and he's he's been that one consistent player in our team this season but he was poor today but you know he's got a week to recover and let's, let's see a better Alex Tetty against Blackbird Todd Cantwell, 5 out of 10 as well. I, I do love Todd Cantwell, but really poor today. Uh, it'd be interesting to see whether Todd or O'Neill starts against Blackburn. Um, Marco Schiefman, 7 out of 10. Took his goal well. It was a pretty poor in possession, but, you know, great goal. Eddie Brendier, 5 out of 10 as well. So, so sloppy from him. But another player who, on his days, is a match winner. And Timu Pukki, 6 out of 10. Held the ball up well. 
uh, got an assist and he did okay but didn't particularly get the service and he probably would have thought he could have taken that first half chance better so that's how social media have reacted to Norwich City's 2-2 uh, draw at Bristol as I said we were sloppy on the ball but we still got a point and you've got to, you've got to be happy with a point and hopefully we can go on to Blackburn away and get a win it won't be easy the next three games will not be easy but you know Norwich City have got character and got resilience and you never know so yeah thanks for watching this uh, social media reaction um, and yeah leave me your thoughts as well Norwich City 2 Bristol City 2 leave me your thoughts down below and I'll see you later